Hello guys, welcome back to Ninjago News TV. For the next part of the villain review series, I'm going to be ranking their motives from best to worst. So the motives are kind of what power the villains. They are what make the villains do what they actually do. They're deep down. Some villains' motives are really deep down, others aren't. So today I'm going to be ranking the motives of Ninjago villains. So if you haven't heard me r rant about this before, I absolutely hate the Hands of Time's motives. So they're going to get the bottom of this list. They pretty much have the only motive. Their only motive pretty much is, I think I'm superior. I think I get to capture the world. That's the only thing that's really powering them. And it's kind of stupid. As they're just normal people who think that they're superior somehow. It's not like other people like... Chen and Pythor and Garvedon and the Overlord, who also have pretty much the same motive, except it's different. It's much different because it's powered by other reasons. Yeah, their motive is powered by other reasons that other factors, including backstory and other stuff. Now, Hands of Time have a motive that isn't really powered by anything behind it. So it's just bland and uncreative. Pythor takes number nine on this spot. Basically, his motive was to release the Great Devourer in order to, quote-unquote, turn day into night and to help get back at the people of Ninjago. Basically, kill everyone, rule over the world with the Great Devourer. So, this motive is a massive step up from the heads of time, as it was actually powered by something kind of involving the entire Serpentine's backstory. So, as we know, they were locked away by the Elemental Masters. So, when Pyther finally was freed, his first intention was to pretty much find the Fang Blades in order to release the Great Devourer. Now this was because he wanted revenge. Now this itself isn't an amazing motive, but it's so much better than the Hands of Time's motive. This motive is okay, but at least it's powered by something instead of the Hands of Time who have a motive powered by nothing. Chen's motive is really just okay also. His is a lot like Pythor's, but a little better in some ways. Mostly because this has even more backstory going on to it. Pythor doesn't have a specific backstory, but he his entire race has a backstory that kind of powered his. Chen's motives were powered by his own personal backstory, which is definitely a step up. So, as we know, in the, Serp the entire Serpentine War was pretty much caused by him, as he manipulated both the humans and the Serpentine. However, they didn't find this out until pretty much after the Serpentine had been locked away, so they punished Chen instead. So Chen had been building his criminal empire all this time while he was punished, while he was, he was serving his eternal punishment. So his motive is a little better because he wanted to have the power that those Anaconda warriors once had, and he wanted to kind of make the world pay for what they did to him. Now that itself is an incredibly creative motive, but like I said, it's better when it's powered by something such as backstory. Yang might be one of the worst Ninjago villains that has ever been introduced, but his motives are actually not that bad. Now, you see, everything else is pretty much bad about him. He's a really bad character, his soundtrack is okay, but his motives are probably the best part about him. So what are his motives exactly? Well, he wanted to become known, and he wanted to do this by achieving immortality. No, he didn't really want to conquer the world, and we never really heard that mentioned from him. Instead, he wanted immortality. So basically, he just wanted to go down in history. He wanted people to know him as one of the best people, the most powerful people ever to live. But he didn't want to do this by conquering Ninjago. This motive, I think, would have been much better had it been featured in an entire season rather than a 44-minute special. In Dave the Departed, he was really just okay. But however, I still think his motives are quite cool. So now, in sixth place, we have the Overlord. We're kind of getting back to this whole conquer the world thing, but the Overlord motive is powered by something much deeper. Essentially, he was the bigger bad of Ninjago. He is the true evil, and he was, and I say this all the time now, but he was meant to be the main antagonist of Ninjago as a series. However, this got abandoned as many more villains came and made their name, but even anyway, he's still the most powerful Ninjago villain ever. And his motives are caused by the fact that he wants to disrupt the balance, basically. This was especially present in Season 2, 
in which he literally used Garmin in order to tip the balance. This whole kind of thing about balance and destiny and that kind of influencing the motive is really interesting, in my opinion. It's not just, like, conquer the world. It's even deeper, honestly, that he wants to conquer the world, but do so by tipping the balance. And it's kind of more than just, I want to conquer the world. So the Overlord's motives are kind of powered by something deeper, and that he essentially wants the balance to be tipped. Garbodon might be my favorite Ninjago villain, but his motives are the worst part about him. However, he's in the top 5, so I'm going to explain why I think that he deserves to be in the top 5. Like many other Ninjago villains, like the majority of them, matter of fact, his main goal was to conquer the world. But this was caused by something else. Garbodon is actually a good man, and there's something corrupting him. And of course, we learned that this was the Great Devourer, which did corrupt his soul and made him evil. So everything he did was actually caused by an uncontrollable desire caused by the venom of the Great Devourer. So actually, he, he, if had he not been bit by the Great Devourer, he never would have wanted to take over the world. And actually, the way that he did take over the world was actually much more interesting than we've seen other Ninjago villains. Like, kind of, Mo the way Moro and Chen did it were really blah, but Garbodon's, it was actually interesting. The way he did it was kind of, was with the dark matter, essentially, and I like that in episode 25, he launched those missiles from the Dark Island. So overall, his motive is powered by something really, really deep. Moro takes the number third spot. Again, he was my third favorite villain that I did mention this in my last video. Anyway, enough of that. So his motives are powered by something that is directly correlated to his backstory. So as a child, we know that Moro wanted to be the Green Ninja. He wasn't, so he ran away and tried to prove himself worthy. He drowned in the caves of despair, all because his, all because of that. This was all because his anger consumed him. So anyway, he was cursed to rot away in the cursed realm. So, however, he was the very first ghost ever to escape the first realm, and he did that successfully. So when he was out, he wanted to curse all of Ninjago. Now his motives are powered by the fact that he wanted to be the Green Ninja, but he didn't get it. So basically, he didn't get what he wanted. To so. This powered him even to when he came back as a ghost many, many years later, decades later, in fact. That same fact that he still wanted to be the Green Ninja powered him. And even in Curse World, he did even say Lo steal Lloyd's Gi, claiming that now he was the Green Ninja. So, you know, that one little event powered his entire life and quote-unquote career as a villain. So Nauticon takes the runner-up spot for me. I feel like his motives are honestly one of the best elements of his character. And again, it was powered by one inciting incident. Now this was him witnessing the destruction of his homeland and pretty much the death of his father. When Nautikon ventured to Jinjago in hopes of meeting his father again, he was astonished to see what he did see. He basically saw his home world, his birth world, collapsing before his eyes as chunks of rubble fell, fell down into an empty pit. He also saw his father, who gave him the Sword of Souls, and then Nautikon left him, never to see him again. So this is really sad by itself. Nautikon just saw his father die, and now he's never going to see him again. He also just saw his home world get destroyed. So basically, his entire season and his entire run through as a villain was powered by this. He wanted to make the ninja make Ninjago pay because basically his home world was destroyed as a byproduct of the Cursed Realm being destroyed. So his world was destroyed by Ninjago being saved. So he figures that it's Ninjago's turn to pay. So during the entire season, he constructs a new Ninjago above Ninjago in order to make up for his homeworld. And I feel like this is really deep and very powerful motives. Now whether you've heard me rave about Harumi on the Ninjago Discord or even in my last video, you would know that I love Harumi, and main, her motives are the best element of her character. Now, Harumi is a very strong villain in other ways, such as her character development and her actual plans and stuff, but her motives really shine through for me. Her motives are emotional, and she tells Lloyd that pretty much the only reason she, she wants Garmadon to be back is because, one, she thinks that Garmadon is the, is the ruler that Ninjago deserves. Two, she wants Lloyd to suffer. Now, why does she want Lloyd to suffer? Basically, her parents were killed by the Great Devourer attack, and apparently it was Lloyd's fault for not destroying the Great Devourer soon enough. 
Which was really stupid, considering Lloyd was just as old as her, a little kid by then. Now, anyway, back to the present. Basically, she wants Lloyd to pay for an event that wasn't even his fault. And she wants him to pay. She doesn't want him to pay by, like, getting hurt or torturing him. It's so much deeper than that. She wants him to suffer. She wants him to see his father, and she wants him to feel horrible. She wants him to, he wa- she wants him to cry himself, to sleep. She just wants him to feel horrible. Now, the second part is she thinks that she's doing the right thing. In episode 81, she says, Let's give Ninjago the leader it deserves. Let's return it to its glory. She thinks by returning Garbodon, she's doing the right thing, actually, and actually making Ninjago a safer place. Which is kind of stupid, but I could see why she would think that. But, again, it's very ironic considering that she causes so much violence herself and probably created many more orphans just like herself. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know. We'll be continuing this next time on the weekend. Ne- upcoming topics will be soundtracks, the characters, final plots, and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.